All right, so it's wonderful to be with you this morning in your home. Thank you for inviting us into your house, your room. I don't know where you're, where you're coming from, but it's beautiful. All right, so we're excited to continue learning about determination today. All right, so we're going to learn about determination. And what is determination? Do you remember? What's determination? Think about that. Maybe ask a mom, dad, brother, sister, what's determination? Determination, right, is, yes, it's deciding it's worth it to finish what you started. All right, not giving up, but keep moving forward. All right, and, and we've got a game today, all right, that's going to test our determination, and it's certainly going to be fun. All right, it's called the Beard Masterpiece. We're going to have some beards. We're going to have some Fruit Loops. We're going to have some fun. All right, let's get ready for that. All right, so welcome to our game, the Beard Masterpiece, all right? So we're going to have some fun making some wonderful beards this morning, all right? So we've got our contestants here. They're all ready, all right, to get bearded up. And you're going to start with some shaving cream, all right? You're going to have a partner that you're just going to put shaving cream all over their face, okay? As if they've got this nice, fluffy Santa Claus beard, all right? Then you're going to make an amazing masterpiece colorful masterpiece with your Fruit Loops, all right? You're going to stand back and then you're going to start throwing those Fruit Loops to stick in their beard, all right? Whoever has the most, or at least the most beautiful, decorative, creative beard at the end wins, all right? Let's have some fun. I'm putting shaving cream on stuff. I'm putting shaving cream on stuff. I'm putting shaving cream on this. I'm putting shaving cream on that. Shaving cream on stuff. I'm putting shaving cream on stuff. Shaving cream, shaving cream on stuff. Hey, I heard you were putting shaving cream on stuff. Need some help? Sure. <laughs> we're putting shaving cream on stuff. We're putting shaving cream on stuff. We're all right, our contestants are ready. They're all bearded up. All right, so now let's go make a masterpiece out of it. Three, two. One, go! Beards! 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 concludes our beard masterpiece game. It looks like they are nice and fruit looped up. All right, let's see. Who won? I'm gonna give the victory to Miss Cindy and Miss Eleanor. Got a few more fruit loops on there, but it was very well done. All right, another game that you can have fun with your friends, with your family, okay, at home. All right, have some fun. All right, wasn't that a fun beard masterpiece challenge? Maybe you could do it at home, ask your parents first, have a good time with that. But right now, it is time to move on to worship time. All right, God loves it when we have fun, when we sing his praises, when we express what's going on in our heart. So we're going to do that right now through singing. I know it might be weird kind of singing at your house by yourself with family, whatever it might be. All right, but I encourage you, be loud. Have some fun and let your neighbors know what's going on because you're so loud praising Jesus. All right, let's sing together now.
Let your sun down and set me free Everything of this world will fade I'm pressing on till I see your face I will live that your will be done I won't stop till your kingdom come It's Haley again. So far this month, I have been making a lot of messes. Like, whoa. So this week, I am tackling the glory of, wait for it, duct tape. Duct tape is so mysterious to me. Like, how is it so strong and sticky at the exact same time? And there are endless uses for it. Endless. Endless. And speaking of endless, sometimes it seems like a roll of duct tape itself is endless. Let's just see how long this thing really is. How am I supposed to unroll this whole roll without getting all the tape all stuck together like this? I've got it. just gonna take a minute. Uh, wow, uh, I sure am stuck. So, this month we've been talking a lot about determination. Determination is deciding it's worth it to finish what you started. In today's story, we meet a believer of Jesus named Stephen, and he was a man of brave determination. You guys enjoy the story. I'm, uh, I'm gonna figure out how to get out of all this duct tape. See you in a bit. <sighs> ah. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Fuck it. You got this. You got this. Use the force. Ah. Hey. Hey. You mind if I, uh... What? Yeah, take, a, sure. take a try? Yeah, go ahead. All right. All right. Huh. Ha! You 
You got one in. Ha! No, you got one in. Ha! It's a bad airplane, though. Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in today. I'm Brandon. And I'm John. And this is the So-and-So Show. Today, we have a great show in store for you. Hang on to your seats, pews, pillows, whatever you sit on while watching this show, because it's going to be a good one. First up, a competition game. Who can flip their water bottle and land it the most times in a row? Go. Go. Uh. Oh, hey, I will. it looks like I won. Next thing, random Christmas carols in the summer. Hey, deck the halls with ice cream sundaes. Fa la 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 la. Tis the season Brandon. to go swimming. Fa la 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 la. You want? Yes. What are you doing? I, I was doing the, uh, the show. The show on 17 cups of Fred's fast fraps? What? No. Well, what's with the racehorse pace? Well, no, I, I was just trying to help you out. You know, I saw on your calendar that uh, you have a haircut appointment in 30 minutes, and I, you know, I didn't want you to be late, so. What? Oh, come on, John. Don't tell me you forgot. No, 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 no. Of course not. I just, I just, uh, I, 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 don't, I don't need to go. That was an optional, suggestive appointment, not a real one. Oh, really? Because it says here, uh, a mandatory haircut. You've got this, John. No excuses. I believe in you. What? This is your handwriting. Oh, who would write notes like that to themselves in their own calendar? I guess you. Oh. Where were we? Oh, yes, yes. Don we now are swimming goggles. John. John, you clearly need a haircut. You can't, you can't just do the show slowly in hopes of getting out of it. I'm not doing the show slowly. Are you afraid of haircuts? What? Stop doing that. Okay. Okay, fine, yes. Ah! Uh, Brandon! Help me! What? Fine! Yes, I'm scared of haircuts, okay? Are you happy now? No, I'm not. I mean, look, John, there's nothing to be scared of. I mean, the people cutting your hair know what they're doing, I and mean, they went to hair college and everything. Well, yeah, they did. And even if they cut your hair shorter than you want, it'll grow back. You shouldn't let fear ruin your beautiful hair. You think my hair is beautiful? Whoa, how long has that been up there? Only a year or two. Okay, you definitely should go to that appointment. Can we just get back to the show, please? Fears are natural, I mean, but that doesn't mean you have to live by them. And, and, and think of all the times that you've been able to overcome your fears. You, you remember that time with the ice? Hmm? Hey, I got us some water. Oh, thank you. There you go. <laughs> what is wrong with you? Ice! 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 No, no, it's good. It's good. Here, try it. Here, try it. Wow. Mm -hmm. That is refreshing. See? Y yeah, but th 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 that was ice. Mm. Oh, what about the calculators? <sighs> 46,723 divided by 17, then distributed to 23 different departments. <laughs> Let's see. So that's 2,748 points. No! What is that? It's a, well, it's a calculator. It's a... No, no. No, I can divide it into 23, too, if you want. No, no it's fun. It's fun. Try it. Just push, push equal. I already divided by 23 there. There you go. 190. Wow! That is really fast. It's, it's like mathematical magic. Come on. It's time to face another fear. Maybe. Need I remind you of the teddy bears? Oh, no! Okay. 
bears. <laughs> you are adorable. You are cuddly. And you are soft. And I will not fear thee. Oh! <laughs> yes! These are great! Oh, I love these! Oh, you're so cuddly, you bear! You bear! Oh, why was I afraid of you? Uh, yeah, that was uh, pretty brave of me. See, you can totally get a haircut. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right, I can, and I will. It's already 2.52! I'm running out of time! We've got to, we've got to... It's Bible Story Time with Kellen! Hey, hey! Hey, Kellen! Hey, Kel Bell! Hmm, let's just stick with Kellen. Kellen it is! <laughs> what do you have for us today, Kellen? Well, today, I'm telling you about a very humble and incredibly brave guy named Stephen. Okay, but make it quick. I've got a haircut to get to. All right. So, after Jesus came back from the dead, the church started to grow very fast. They needed someone to help take care of all of the new believers. Stephen was the person they chose. Stephen was wise, and he was full of faith and of the Holy Spirit. With God's power, Stephen did amazing things for people to see. But there were some who didn't approve of him. They started telling lies about Stephen. They said he was saying things that were against the law. So Stephen was arrested and taken before the Sanhedrin. The Sanhedrin was the Jewish court system where people were judged by a group of religious leaders. They listened to all the lies spoken about Stephen and asked, is what these people are saying true? I want you to understand what was happening here because times were different back then. The stuff Stephen was being accused of was punishable by death. But instead of backing down, Stephen took a stand. He started to remind them of how God spoke to Abraham thousands of years ago, telling him to move to a new land that God promised to give him and his family. Stephen reminded them of Joseph and how even though he was sold as a slave to Egypt, God was with him and how Joseph eventually became a ruler of Egypt. He talked about Moses, who God spoke to through a burning bush, telling him to go and rescue his people from slavery, and how through many wonders and miracles, Moses led the Israelites out of slavery through the Red Sea. And Stephen reminded the Sanhedrin of how King David's son, Solomon, worked to build a temple so God would have a permanent place to live. But, Stephen said, the Most High God does not live in any houses made by human hands. Stephen told them their entire history, putting together the pieces, how God had been with his people since the beginning, how he had always kept his promises. Then I'm thinking Stephen probably took a deep breath <sighs> because he was getting to the most important part. He told the Sanhedrin that Jesus was the promised Messiah sent by God and that they were responsible for Jesus' death. When the members of the Sanhedrin heard this, they became very angry. But Stephen looked up and he saw what can only be described as the glory of God. And he saw Jesus standing there. Look, he said, I see heaven open. The Son of Man is standing at God's right hand. The members of the Sanhedrin didn't want to hear that. They covered their ears. They yelled at the top of their voices. They couldn't see what Stephen was seeing. They didn't know all the pieces of the puzzle. So in their anger and confusion, they ordered that Stephen be put to death. As he died, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit and don't hold this sin against them. Stephen had every reason to be afraid, but he was determined to bring honor to God in even the scariest situations. Back to you guys. Whoa, yeah. Steven's definitely braver than me. I, I, I'm scared of a haircut. And teddy bears. Not anymore. Well, remember, Steven wasn't brave all on his own. He was full of the Holy Spirit. God was with him the whole time. You know something? Whenever I remember that God is with me, it does make me feel more brave. It should, because God can do anything and because God knows everything, 
We only see a part of the puzzle, but God sees the whole thing. Wow. Yeah. Hey, thanks, Kellen. I, I'm more determined than ever to get my hair cut. You want to come with me? Uh, no way. <laughs> yeah. We'll see you next time, Kellen. Yeah, thanks for the story. Bye. Bye. All right, John, to the barber with you. You bet. But first, don't start procrastinating no, again. No, no, it's not that. It, it's time for Reveal the Question. <laughs> Boom. When were you scared but kept going? My answer is right now. And it, Whoa, right now? I got to run. See ya. Okay, bye. Bye. What about you? When were you scared but kept going? Talk it over and be inspired by each other's bravery. Until next time, I'm Brandon. Whoa. And I'm John. Go, what are you doing? I go. go, 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 go. And this was the so-and-so show. Bye. Ah, bears, you guys are so cool. You're so soft and you're so cuddly and you never gave up on me after all those years. You know what? Thank you so much for always sticking with me, even after I was afraid for so long. I... Ah! Oh! No, get away! Get away! No, no! No, bear! I attack the bear with the bear! I finally got unstuck. Wasn't today's story amazing? Stephen trusted God and decided to stand strong in what he believed. Even though we don't know how it will turn out, we follow a God who does know the end of the story. We are part of God's big story. God has always had a big plan, a bigger story. Abraham didn't know the end of the story when he moved his whole family to a new land. And Moses didn't know what would happen either after leading the people out of Egypt. Now. We know the other side of the story with how God sent Jesus to ultimately save the whole world. And Stephen was one person who continued to follow Jesus and speak up about him, even when he didn't know what would happen to him. Sometimes there are things you're gonna go through where you can't see the end of the story, but God does. When things are really hard and feel awful and you just wanna give up, talk to God. Talk to an adult you trust about how you're feeling. You don't have to try to do things alone. Everyone will have different things that are hard, like losing a grandparent, or your parents getting into a fight, or maybe you're having trouble making friends. It's hard when we don't know how things will turn out in the end. But the one thing to remember today is this. Keep going because God knows the end of the story. You know what I need to keep going at? My explorations with duct tape! Hmm, what should I make first? A bookmark! Perfect! Ta-da! <sighs> Boom. Crushed it. I'll see you guys next time. Bye! Oh man, so the story of Stephen encourages me in so many different ways. But one way that this story encourages me is to, to kind of give me a reason for why I can show determination. And it's the bottom line today, that, that we should not give up. All right, we can keep moving forward. Why? Because God knows the end of the story. Yes, he knows the end of the story. You know, sometimes it, it's hard to keep moving forward when you don't see the big picture, right? Maybe you're at home this week and Maybe your family's doing puzzles. I, I had a friend that said, hey, they were doing a lot of puzzles because they were spending all this time indoors. And it got me thinking, yeah, I've done puzzles before. But have you ever done a puzzle without seeing the picture on the box, right? You, you Usually you need to see the picture on the box, at least I need to, because that helps me kind of see that little piece that I'm like, okay, I have no idea. Where does this fit in the whole big picture of the puzzle? But if you can see, oh no, that goes right there. That's in the middle, okay, and that's a corner there, that's a corner there, and you see the whole big picture. It helps you put the little pieces together, okay? In Stephen's story, he says, hey, all throughout the Bible, we see God putting these little pieces together through David and Abraham and Moses, and even though it didn't seem like it was going anywhere fast or it didn't seem like things were going well for them, they were going through hard times, I mean, Stephen ended up being killed. 
they were able to show determination and keep moving forward. Why? Because they knew and they believed that God saw the big picture. And he sees the big picture of your life. And so you might be thinking like, yeah, how's this all going to come together? Like, man, maybe maybe you're struggling, all right, with, with, you know, with school and with studying and with doing what you're supposed to be doing. Or you're struggling just with you know, with a relationship with a friend, maybe you're discouraged, maybe you're worried about, you know, whatever it might be about the future. It's understandable. You know, the people in the Bible worried, but they trusted God because they knew that he saw the big picture. Now we can look back on their stories and see, yeah, God was in control. He did have the big story in mind. Jesus did come and he rose from the dead and he has given us hope that no matter what, go what what's going on, he sees the big picture. And in the end, we win. All right. So let's take confidence and courage in that this week. All right. And keep moving forward because we know that God sees the big picture. Let me pray for us and we can wrap up. All right. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for the time that we get to come around your word, learn stories like the story of Stephen and how, man, he was able to endure and go through really hard times, challenging times because he knew you saw the big picture, because you were in control no matter what was going on. And so we ask that we would, you would help us to trust you and keep moving forward, show that determination, because we know that, that you know what is best for us, you want what is best for us, and you've got the whole picture in mind. It's in your son Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. All right. Man, what a great week. We're going to wrap up now, but let me remind you of the memory verse, all right? Maybe you can be working on it a little bit every day. Just say it a couple times, Galatians 6, 9. Hey, let us not become weary in doing what is good, because at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we don't give up, all right? If we don't give up. So work on that memory verse, and we'll see you next week.